Despite our efforts to minimize civilian casualties during the strike, the fire that broke out was unex un unexpected and unintended. This is a devastating incident which we did not expect. We are investigating what caused the fire that resulted in this tragic loss of life. The investigation is ongoing. I will now share the facts that we've gathered so far. As you can see, in our aerial surveillance from the time of the strike, we, are, we targeted a closed structure away from tent area. As you can see, there are no tents in the immediate vicinity of the structure that we targeted. Contrary to reports, we conducted the strike outside the area that we designated as a humanitarian area and called civilians to evacuate to. Our strike was over a kilometer and a half away from the El Muasi humanitarian area, what we call the safer zone. Here is where Hamas claims we struck. And here is where we conducted our strike against the Hamas senior commanders outside the area designated as a humanitarian area. Our aerial surveillance was filming prior to the strike in order to minimize civilian harm. Here is the footage from our strike of the specific structure where the senior Hamas commanders were meeting. The strike was conducted using two munitions with small warheads suited for this targeted strike. We're talking about munition with 17 kilos of explosive material. This is the smallest munition that our jets can use. Following this strike, a large fire ignited for reasons that are still being investigated. Our munition alone could not have ignited a fire of this size. I want to repeat it. Our munition alone could not have ignited a fire of this size. Our investigation seeks to determine what may have caused such a large fire to ignite. We are looking into all possibilities, including the option that weapons stored in a compound next to our target, which we did not know of, may have ignited as a result of the strike. It should be noted, Hamas has been operating from this area since October 7th. Here, in this satellite image, 43 meters from the structure we targeted, you can see Hamas rocket launchers. Hamas fired rockets from these launchers at Israel during their massacre on October 7th. We are also assessing footage documented by Gazans on the night of the strike posted on social media, which appear to show secondary explosions, indicating that there may have been weapons in the area. Our signal intelligence intercepted some phone calls that reinforce this concern, raising the possibility that weapons stored in a nearby compound caught fire. Here is one of those phone calls. We are working to verify the cause of the fire. It is still too early to be determined. Even when we do find the cause of the fire, that erupted, it won't make this situation any less tragic. We took a number of steps prior to the strike to avoid civilian casualties, aerial surveillance from above, using specific munitions aimed at minimizing collateral damage, delaying the attack in order to further assess expected civilian presence and other means. This incident is being investigated 
by the general staff fact-finding and assessment mechanism, an independent and professional body that is investigating the circumstances of those killed in the area of the strike. This investigation will be swift, comprehensive, and transparent. Our war is against Hamas, not against the people of Gaza, which is why we convey deep sorrow for this tragic loss of life. Questions, please. Question for Fox News. What was seen in the surveillance before the strike was called in? We were working not just with those surveillance that I showed here. There are other things we did that I will not share now in order to verify the existence of women and children in, those, in the compound where Hamas members were. And we know that in the compound that we attacked, there were only Hamas members. We're now trying to understand in the compound nearby, what was there? What was that something that ignited the fire? Question from CNN. Were any civilians killed by the IDF fired munitions, or does the IDF believe that all of the civilian casualties were caused by the fire and or secondary explosion? And what is the name of the munition used? Um, we used the smallest munition that uh, our jet fighters can use. And it's also a very accurate munition. This is what I can say about the munition. And uh, the other question was? Were any civilians killed by the IDF fired munition, or does the IDF believe that all of the civilian casualties were caused by the fire and a secondary explosion? The investigation is ongoing, and the fact-finding mechanism will look into it in a swift, comprehensive, and transparent way, and I'm sure will supply all those details. Question from Radio France. Can you give us an update on tank advances in Rafa and along the Philadelphia corridor? We are operating in Rafa in a very targeted and precise way. There is still terror in Rafa. There is still Hamas battalions in Rafa. A couple of days ago, launchers from Rafa fired to Tel Aviv. Millions of people went into bomb shelters. There is still terror in Rafa. Uh, today and the day before, we have uh, uh, again detected tunnels on the Philadelphia corridors. Those are tunnels going to Sinai. We are talking to the Egyptians. We are demolishing those tunnels. We are working in a precise and targeted way. There are still hostages in Rafa. And we need to make sure that we do everything we can to bring our hostages back home. שאלה מכאן 11, הפלסטינים מדווחים בדקות האחרונות על 21 הרוגים מתקיפות של צה"ל במערב העיר רפיח, באזור המואסי. מה ידוע לנו על זה? אני לא מכיר את האירוע הזה. אנחנו נשים את האירוע הזה לתוך בדיקה ואנחנו נעדכן אתכם בהקדם.